Adrenocorticotropic hormone, also known as adrenocorticotropin, corticotropin, or simply ACTH, is a peptide hormone that helps regulate the release of hormones by the adrenal glands, which sit above the kidneys. Secretion of ACTH is dependent on the hypothalamic pituitary axis. The hypothalamus, which is at the base of the brain, secretes corticotropin-releasing hormones, or CRH, into the hypophyseal portal system, which is a network of capillaries linking the hypothalamus to the anterior part of the pituitary gland. In the anterior pituitary, there are many different types of cells, each responsible for producing a type of hormone. The corticotropin-releasing hormone binds to a surface protein of one of these cell types, called corticotroph cells, and stimulates them to release ACTH. Inside corticotroph cells, ACTH is synthesized from a large precursor molecule called pre-propiomelanocortin, or pre-POMC. Pre-propiomelanocortin has a short tail called a leader or signal peptide which is cleaved off to form propiomelanocortin, or POMC. And POMC is then split into multiple peptide hormones, and one of them is ACTH. ACTH is then stored inside granules within the corticotroph cells, where it then waits until it's released into the blood. Enjoying our osmosis videos? Unlock your full potential with an osmosis subscription. Get unlimited access to every Osmosis feature and resource with a free seven-day trial. Normally, ACTH is released in a pulsatile manner throughout the day and peaks in the morning around 6 a.m., but it is also secreted in response to various forms of stressful stimuli. For example, the hypothalamus senses when there's hypoglycemia or low blood sugar, and in response, it secretes more corticotropin-releasing hormone. Another example is during an infection, where pro-inflammatory cytokines act on the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary to cause ACTH secretion. Now, when ACTH is released, it travels to the adrenal glands, which sit above each kidney and bind to the ACTH receptor, also called melanocortin receptor 2, located in the membrane of their target cells, which are adrenocortical cells. Each gland is made up of an inner medulla, which secretes catecholamines as well as an outer cortex. The adrenal cortex itself is divided into three zones, each one secreting a different steroid hormone. The outermost zone is the zona glomulorosa, which secretes mineralocorticoids. Next, there's the zona fasciculata, which secretes glucocorticoids, of which cortisol is the most important one. And finally, there's the zona reticularis that secretes androgens. Zooming back into the adrenal cortical cells, the ACTH receptor is a seven-pass transmembrane receptor, meaning they are really long proteins that have one end that sits outside the cell and binds ACTH. Then the snake-like protein dips in and out of the cell membrane seven times and finally ends on the inside of the cell. The end of the protein within the cell activates intracellular proteins. When ACTH binds to the ACTH receptor, it causes the adrenal cortical cells to release corticosteroid hormones, mainly glucocorticoids, which have anti-inflammatory and metabolic effects, but also mineralocorticoids to some extent, which influence electrolyte and fluid balance. Glucocorticoids are a class of steroid hormones, and the most important glucocorticoid in humans is cortisol. Once it's made, cortisol travels via the blood and binds to the glucocorticoid receptors, which are generally intracellular receptors within nearly every cell in the body. Cortisol helps to regulate both the immune response as well as cellular metabolism. With regard to the immune response, cortisol promotes an overall anti-inflammatory state by inhibiting the two main products of inflammation, prostaglandins and leukotrienes as well as inhibiting interleukin-2 production by white blood cells. In adipose tissue, cortisol triggers lipolysis, which is the breakdown of fats or energy, which can be used by other cells throughout the body. In the liver, it promotes gluconeogenesis, which is the production of new glucose molecules, and increased glycogen storage. Cortisol also increases insulin resistance in tissues, which means that insulin becomes less effective at moving glucose into cells, 
leading to an increase in blood glucose levels. The increased glucose levels also stimulates the release of more insulin. And because this is similar to what happens in people with diabetes, this effect of cortisol is called diabetogenic. In the muscles, cortisol stimulates proteolysis, which is the breakdown of proteins into amino acids, which then serve as substrates for gluconeogenesis. Cortisol also plays a role in maintaining blood pressure levels, since it upregulates alpha-1 adrenergic receptors in blood vessels, which causes vasoconstriction. Cortisol increases brain performance, mental alertness, and stimulates memory of emotional events while it inhibits retrieval of already stored long-term memory. That's why, if you dunk your arm in ice-cold water while trying to memorize a fact, you're more likely to remember the fact. But there are definitely easier and more comfortable ways to remember things. Cortisol also decreases bone formation by inhibiting new bone formation by osteoblasts, suppressing calcium absorption in the bowel, and decreasing the production of type 1 collagen, which is fundamental for new bone matrix. Cortisol also inhibits fibroblasts, which lead to poor wound healing. As you can see, it affects every organ system. Glucocorticoids are involved in a few negative feedback loops to control the release of adrenocorticotropic hormone. First, glucocorticoids signal the hypothalamus to stop secreting corticotropin-releasing hormone, which in turn decreases anterior pituitary secretion of adrenocorticotropic hormone. Second, glucocorticoids signal directly into the anterior pituitary to stop the release of adrenocorticotropic hormone. And third, glucocorticoids may also inhibit the rates of pre melanocortin synthesis in the corticotroph cells. As a secondary function, adrenocorticotropic hormone also acts as the melanocortin receptor 1, which is a 7-pass transmembrane receptor which is responsible for pigmentation of the skin. More specifically, its activation causes the melanocytes in the skin to switch from generating yellow or red pheomelanin to the brown or black eumelanin. For this reason, individuals affected by diseases characterized by excess ACTH show bronzing of the skin. All right, as a quick recap, when corticotropin-releasing hormone is released by the hypothalamus, this stimulates the anterior pituitary to release adrenocorticotropic hormone into the bloodstream. Adrenocorticotropic hormone then travels to the adrenal gland and triggers the production of glucocorticoids. This promotes an overall anti-inflammatory state of the body, as well as stimulating metabolic pathways like lipolysis, gluconeogenesis, and proteolysis to help maintain normal concentrations of glucose in the blood. Finally, glucocorticoids travel to the hypothalamus and inhibit the release of corticotropin-releasing hormone and ACTH inhibiting its hormonal cascade. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.